Spoiler alert! <laughs> Hi, I'm Andre. I did a review of the Deadpool movie. I did a non-spoiler review. So here I'm gonna talk about some of the spoilers. I'm only gonna talk about spoilers here. So if you haven't seen the spoiler free review, make sure you check that out. So I mentioned in my non-spoiler review that I love the way that they told Deadpool's origin story in this movie. And they do it through flashback storytelling. They start off with a Deadpool action scene, very similar to some of the stuff that you saw in the trailer. But then anytime it wants to tell you some of the backstory, it goes to a flashback. So you get the flashback of who Wade Wilson is, how he met Vanessa, how he got cancer, how he went to the program to try to get the cancer out, how he met up with his villain, how everything happened to him. You get the entire origin story, but it's split into these little flashback chunks. And it works, whereas most superhero movies give you an hour of origin story and you're just sitting there waiting, hoping that at some point a costume's gonna get put on. And then once it finally does, you're like, all right, yay, here we go. That was a really smart way of doing this, particularly with Deadpool, which some other superheroes you can do that because you want to see the backstory that leads up to the hero. But with Deadpool, you know people are waiting for him to go crazy. You know they're waiting for that fourth wall breaking. You know they're waiting for those silly jokes and humor and over the top violence. So you need to start with that and then we can go back and learn. I think that this is going to be a type of origin storytelling that we're going to see in other superhero movie films. Spider-Man. Take note of this, okay? When Spider-Man gets reintroduced once again into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this is how it needs to be done. And it can be done with a shorter back backstory, a shorter flashback. But this is how you do it so we can get right into the superhero character. You don't do this for every character, but for some people, when their backstory is pretty basic, Go with that. Man, the references in this movie are awesome. Like right off the bat with that opening sequence with the slow motion of the car flip and the hilarious credits where they're not showing people's names but showing who they are. The hot guy, the hot girl, a uh, British villain, <laughs> comic relief. Like just all that was great. And the nice shot of Ryan Reynolds on a People magazine as Sexiest Man Alive. And then later on they show Hugh Jackman as Sexiest Man Alive. But all the references to X-Men Origins, Wolverine was great to Green Lantern was great Green Lantern they did a couple of them they showed a picture of, of a guy dressed as Green Lantern in the opening sequence with the slow motion car flip shot and then of course the the classic line that was in the trailer of don't make the suit green or animated and then with X-Men Origins Wolverine they had a little figure a little action figure that that Deadpool owned that looked like the old Deadpool that they used in X-Men Origins Wolverine with the shut mouth and the blades and then there's even a point where Ajax tells uh Del's Wade Wilson, you got a lot of mouth. We should sew that shut and Wade was like, mm, you don't want to do that. Like that, that, that stuff is really great. Lots of jokes at Wolverine, lots of references to Hugh Jackman, uh, lots of references to, uh, to X-Men Origins. I love the, uh, there was a really subtle joke. Wade and Vanessa went out on a date and she was like, why are we doing all this? Like, why are we hanging out playing skee-ball? And he's like, oh, this is so that I know more about you and you don't become a one-dimensional character. It was <laughs> you know, and of course, the talking to the audience was great. I mean, just so many good jokes. I love that when he's about to kill somebody, there's at one point where he just moves the camera himself, being like, you don't want to see this. Oh, man, the references, the music in this, you know, Angel and, and Calendar Girl and, and, and You're My Inspiration and Shoot, X gonna give it to you. Uh, I just, I loved it. Like, all the pop culture references were making me laugh in this. It was just so good. I mean, that's what people wanted from Deadpool, and you got it. But it's so awesome. Yet again, like I said in the non-spoiler review, it's so awesome that they could do all this wackiness, particularly fourth wall breaking, because that's a tough thing to do, especially a fourth wall joke. What was it? The fourth wall joke within a fourth wall joke, a 16th wall joke. Um, to do that kind of humor and still have a compelling story that you can follow is impressive. That is very hard to do. So much, much kudos to the writers of this movie. The writers did a remarkable job of being able to find that balance between crazy sophomoric humor, fourth wall pop culture referential humor, as well as telling a compelling, good hero villain story with an anti-hero. Like that, that's, just, that's a lot to take on and they did it. I love all the stuff that they did with X-Men with the school because if there was ever any question if this movie is set in the same universe as X-Men, it is. It clearly is. They show the Xavier school. They just don't show any X-Men except for Colossus and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. I love the joke 
where where Deadpool goes to the school and he's just like, it's interesting. I keep coming here, only see the same two X Men. It's like the studio couldn't afford another X Men. Like that was that was hilarious. And I love uh, Negasonic's joke about. What's so great about this place? The, 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 the school gets blown up every four or five years. You know? <laughs> and because Deadpool is this weird, out there, over the top character, they pair him up a couple times in this movie with Colossus. Whoever made that decision, brilliant. It is so awesome to have Colossus in this film. So basically, if Deadpool is the rated R, violent, sex, nudity, over the top, character and movie that you wanted. Colossus is that PG-13 shit. He wants Deadpool to be like them and it's kind of like a little bit of a subtext of there of like, Deadpool, you should be more like these other heroes that are out there, basically the PG-13, clean cut, family friendly heroes. And Deadpool's like, I ain't got time for that. And the ending where Colossus is giving him the speech where Deadpool has Ajax right under him, he could shoot him dead, and Colossus is like, you only get so many times in life to be a superhero, to make the choice, to do the right thing, and in the middle of his speech, Deadpool just is like, nope, boom! <laughs> to the point where Colossus even throws up, and I just, the, the, the dynamic that they had between those two, it was so amazing. Colossus came from that PG-13 X-Men movie, still wants to keep those PG-13 X-Men movie family-friendly ideals into the Deadpool movie, and Deadpool is just like, nah, buddy, you in rated our land now. We do things my way. And I love that. And I love that Negasonic Teenage Warhead was kind of the in-between. Like, she wasn't ever, like, dirty or, or anything like that, but she definitely had that angst that she could throw against Deadpool and everyone else. Even to the point where Deadpool even points it out. He's like, are you going to give me uncomfortable silence or are you going to say something, some smart remark? It was like, that was just smart. Since they have established that this is in the X-Men universe, my only hope for any future movies is, they gotta get some X-Men cameos. I mean, could you imagine the fun that they would have? Hugh Jackman most definitely has to make a cameo. They gotta get Wolverine in this. I think Halle Berry would do it in a heartbeat, honestly. I feel like she would do this. I think uh, Cyclops, he would do it, totally. I could totally see James Marsden doing a cameo in Deadpool. He probably would want to do it. Throw a little bit of extra money, whatever you gotta do to keep this movie authentic. I don't want it to become like a $200 million movie because I'm afraid that it would then turn into all the other movies that we've seen. Keep it the way that it is, but just throw a little bit of extra cash to get some X-Men cameos, because I would love to see more of the X-Men make their way in here somehow and just Deadpool to just mess with them so much. It would be hilarious. And I know some people were speculating that Marina Barakin, if I say her name right, Marina Barakin, in the comic book, she turns into a, a, a mutant. That doesn't happen in this movie. It could happen in future movies, who knows? But right now, she's still Vanessa. The main bad guy, Ajax, which I thought was going to be kind of a mediocre villain, he's your basic British villain in this movie, but he's enjoying himself. Like, you can just see it in his face that he is just having a good time being a bad guy. He's not that bad guy that you get mad about because he's trying to destroy the world or anything like that. I mean, he does some bad stuff, obviously, to Wade Wilson in this movie, but... He's just so happy about being bad and about what he does. He he is just that prick a hole. You know that's just that, that like 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 very douchey. He knows he's an a hole and he just keeps going with it. Like he's just like yeah, I know everyone hates me. I don't care. I'm still gonna make you hate me. You want to see him get beat up. You want you want to walk into the screen yourself and slap him a couple times because you just he just has that attitude about him. Like yeah. Yeah, what are you gonna do? What's my name? And just, ugh. Kudos to Gina Carano, who plays Angel Dust in this. She was great in this. Everyone is so good in this. Everybody. Ajax is definitely dead, but I noticed that Angel Dust got rescued by Colossus, so I have a feeling that we could see Angel Dust in a sequel if they were to make a second one. I would love to see her back. I think Gina Carano did a great job, so I would love to see the return of Angel Dust. Even Leslie Uggams, blind out. I love her in this movie. And the thing about some of these characters is they're not even really in the movie that much but when they are they shine she's great in this movie she has a great rapport with with ryan reynolds and that's the thing that works about this ryan reynolds with her ryan reynolds with marina bacher and ryan reynolds with colossus and negus on a teenage warhead ryan reynolds with tj miller the chemistry is just so strong with this movie everyone is so good in this everybody stan lee of course makes a cameo he's got to do it and boy is his cameo special he is a dj at a strip club we get boobs we get butts and then we get stan lee hey everybody welcome to the stage <laughs> it's chastity excelsior <laughs>
Go ahead, man. You know he got some. I mean, let's just be real, okay? Stan Lee is a player, right? He is the Hugh Hefner in the comic book world. That dude got some on set. One of them women went home with Stan Lee. Bet you money on that. And then we got, of course, the after credit scene. And what better way to do an after credit scene, particularly in a Deadpool movie, than to give homage to one of the first after credit scenes that a lot of us probably remember before those Marvel films were bringing, you know, Samuel L. Jackson out and setting up future movies. We had Ferris Bueller. Ferris Bueller's Day Off had an amazing after credit scene where Matthew Broderick came out talking to the audience. Is like, hey, we're done here. Go home. So Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool takes homage to that, does the Ferris Bueller bit, goes away, and then comes back again to say, okay, here we go, I'll give you a little secret, and he lets us know that Cable will be in the sequel. They don't know who he's gonna be, he said they haven't cast him yet, but he's definitely going to be in the sequel, so look forward to that in Deadpool 2, which I'm pretty sure we're gonna get. I'm pretty certain this movie will do well enough, or I'm just hoping it will do well enough that we do get a Deadpool 2, so we can get more Deadpool, so we can get Cable. Again, I cannot stress this enough, I really enjoyed this movie. I, it's, it's, just, it's just a fun movie. I'm not saying like, it's the best thing in the entire world, it's just, it was just fun. It was just entertaining. And like I said, it was just nice to see a comic book movie or a superhero movie just be a little bit different. Just feel like it didn't follow every single beat that we've seen before. And even though some of the stuff that it did in it is not groundbreaking or brand new, it was done in a very fun way, in a very entertaining way that I never felt bored with this thing. I was just, I just constantly was entertained by it. So let me know what you thought about this movie. Tell me your favorite Deadpool jokes that you loved in the movie in the comments. I love you like a play cousin. I'm Audi 5000. Chain chomp yomp. Oh, he said I'm Audi 5000 in this movie, didn't he? That's awesome. Yay, Deadpool and Andre are one and the same. What? <laughs> by America and other countries that are allowed to have YouTube in them.